Welcome to the Wingman Show. We're floating like butterflies and stinging like bees. Rumble, you badass jet pilots. Rumble. Welcome to the Wingman Show. My name is Commander Drew Brown. My wingman, my friend, my main man, two dope boys in some Navy jets is Dr. Paul Thompson. What's up, brother Paul? How you doing today? I'm doing today. I'm doing real good today. Glad to see you. This is going to be a good show and I'm ready to get started. Oh, I'm fired up. You know, I went to go see my barber. Now, you know, in black culture, you have one barber. You know, you don't go anywhere else, but one barber. And your barber becomes your friend, kind of. Well, my barber, Mandrell, we really are friends. We have great talks together in the shop and everything. And I usually call him up. I get an appointment. That's how it's been going for the past 12 years. Well, this time I call him up and he texts me back an app. It's called the Barbershop app. And I'm like, what the hell is this? Well, I had to go on the app and make an appointment. So this came up. First of all, it's funny, but when I looked on his app, he charges $18 for a haircut. Well, he used to charge $15, and I didn't know the prices changed. And I used to throw him $20 each time he gave me a haircut. Well, now I realize I was giving him $2 tips. So I tried to give him extra. He wouldn't take it. But anyway, the app, it took away our socialization. Are apps and technology, are they taking away the way we communicate with each other, the eye-to-eye contact, being social, being human beings? Our kids, I I walked up to a kid, and I asked him, how do you approach a girl? He says, I go up to him, and I ask him, you know, what's your IG? Your IG? What about your phone number? No, your Instagram. Well, first you do Snapchat, then you do Instagram. So, Dr. Paul, technology can be losing some of our feelings between people in society. What do you think, Dr. Paul? Uh, I think you're right. It's obvious. And it can it affects everybody from the very young, even to the very old. It's kind of a, a big benefit to older people who can't get around as much. And it, you know, the other side of it is you can do things now that physically, you know, you may not be able to because of arthritis or medical conditions. And so it's a it's a lifeline to some folks, but it hurts the younger ones who don't develop any kind of social skills. It's uh, maybe I'm getting off topic here a little bit, but you have a good number of these violent incidents when there's a manifesto left and I don't want to be negative, but these manifestos are here. And one of the salient features of a number of them is that there's a frustration because a guy can't get a date or has no contact or ability to communicate with someone of the of the, of the opposite sex. And for that I reason... Think, Dr. Paul, you know about that dating thing? I think young men today, that's why I think they shoot people. They, they feel they can't lose. So they'd rather not go up to a girl and get turned down than take a chance like we used to do. You go, hey, you want to dance? No, get out of here. Well, you feel bad. <laughs> you go back and you find another girl and you try it again. So yeah. now it's like you can't lose a fight now. You know, yeah, back yeah. when I mean, you were in school, you get punched in the mouth, you lost. That was it. Next day, best friends. Now there's no losing. I have to kill you. That's right. I mean, you know, you, you get punched in the mouth, you lose. Then you come back, maybe you do better the next day. <laughs> you don't have to slaughter a whole group. Well, you know what? What happens is now that punch in the face goes online and everybody sees the punch in the face. Uh-huh. And so it's a whole different aspect. Before, three kids saw it. Okay, now it's public humiliation across public. the uh, uh, across the airwaves. That's that's different. That's different. Yeah, but the an- answer to your question, short answer to your question is, yeah, you've, you've, we've lost a lot. So the question is not how much we've lost. It's like, how do you get it back? What do you do with the new group of people? How do you modify? How do you modulate this stuff? So that you're able to just function as a human being and not just uh, an extension to an iPhone or digital device attachment, put the human back in the human being a little bit. That's right, Dr. Paul. Well, we got some badass jets behind us. I got a Tomcat. I got to tell you, I love the Tomcat. And when I was going through jet training, that's what I really wanted to fly. I'm so happy I flew A6s, but I love the way a Tomcat looks. So I got a Tomcat coming off the catapult. Yeah, yeah, that- Dr. Dr. Paul. Yeah, that F fourteen is it's it's a big airplane. It's a it's a good looking airplane. Landing aboard the ship is something about the 
the profile of, of an F4 coming coming aboard that was just different for some reason. Beautiful. It was really, really beautiful. The airplane behind me is uh, not a Navy airplane. It's called an XB-70. It was an Air Force airplane for a bit. It was designed to be a uh, high-altitude strategic bomber to fly Mach 3 plus and over 70,000 feet. But they scrapped that program in the early 60s, and they used that airplane and three more as, as like test beds. They were testing stuff. Well, that airplane behind me is actually destroyed in 1966 uh, during a photo op. They were, they were in formation with four of the airplanes. It was an F-4, an F-5, an F-104, and a T-38, I think. And there were two on each side of the airplane. For whatever reason, the F-104 drifted into this XB-70 Valkyrie, they called it. And uh, there was a collision. The F-104 flipped on its on its back, went across, and destroyed the uh, vertical stabilizers of the XB-70, these two things sticking up behind me. And uh, the F-104 was going down. The XB-70 flew straight for a while. And then when it, it went into a, a dive, the uh, command pilot ejected. The guy in the right seat did not get out. He perished along with the guy in the F-104. Oh. I think to this day, they don't know why it happened. But anyway, there were just four made, and I think that was probably the almost the last flight. But that was just on a photo op. On wow, a that's day. great, Dr. Paul. So nice be careful. Story. Hey, yeah. I'd like to welcome all our frequent flyers, people who listen to us all the time. And, you know, if you would, check us out on Instagram. Check us out on YouTube. Why don't you hit that subscribe button for us? I really appreciate that. Well, we both would. And, you know, we have a frequent flyer flow line. That flow line, that means you can write us, ask us questions, uh, and we'll give you answers. And that's at wingmanshow.com. Wingmanshow.com. Write us a question. We will be happy to answer it. And boy, we got a great wingman for you today. Great. And the slogan is, everyone deserves a chance to play. I love that, Dr. Paul. I love that. Anyway, we're sponsored by Magic Mind. I took mine this morning. I'm sure Dr. Paul took yours. Did you take it? Yeah, it was good. It's uh, I think I'm on my last bottle. I need to I need to resupply. I think we're going to get refilled really quickly. You get more productivity, less stress for sure, and I get things done. You know, I love that it stops my procrastination because I got that bad. All right, Dr. Paul, peanut allergies. You told me that you thought that that was a hoax. We looked into it, and the reason we're talking about it is because this young man in the UK, Hugo, got the first peanut allergy treatment. Now, it doesn't stop peanut allergies. It just stops the severity. But when we looked into it, Dr. Paul, peanut allergies just started in 1990. How is that possible? Yeah, I, uh, they believe, it's believe that... I guess our practices, the materials and our clothing inside of our homes or apartments where we live, it's kind of really jacked up our immune systems. Plus the fact that people, particularly young people, don't get outside as much as they used to. So their immune systems are really never developed. If you're in a sterile cloistered environment for too long, <clears throat> you don't develop natural protections. And I hope people understand that when you're too clean, when you're obsessed with being clean, you're hurting yourself because your immune system needs to fight in order to get strong. And some people try to be so neat and clean. What happens is their immune system goes down. Don't you think, Doc? Yeah. And I read further that, you know, you talk about young people. It apparently can occur in people of any age, even older people who are eating peanut butter every day. They can develop it, too. And again, it's related to compromised immune system. Oftentimes, from not going outside, this is the importance of fresh air and sunlight from an early age and really all your life. Yeah, we need to get out there in that sun. Yep. We talked about the banks failing last show, and I just wanted to add this because I said that they invested in kind of all kind of investments that were out there and they were looking for big, big returns. That's not true. I found out they all invested in treasury notes. Mm -hmm. And when interest rates go up, treasury notes go down. And because right. those interest rates were rising so high, they were all losing money. That and that Swiss bank Credit Suisse, I told you this morning, 
They started an investigation on them. They've already found $200 million in offshore accounts from U.S. businessmen trying to not pay taxes. And that's what the problem is. These banks are not just as pure as you think. It's all about the money, Dr. Paul. Right. It's it's uh, it's really hard to hide money now. Very hard to hide money. After uh, the attacks on 9-11, there was a question on how all this was financed. Because to get a lot of things done, to get anything done in America costs money. Even to be a terrorist actually costs money. Uh, so the thought was if you can stop that, stop the money flows for drugs and weapons, things like that, there'd be more safety. Consequently, pretty much any bank in the U.S. that has a branch or any any foreign branch, any foreign bank from anywhere in the world that has a branch in the U.S. or connections has to disclose, you know, who has what. You can't just go to some place, uh, the Caribbean or some offshore place. I used to get these newsletters talking about invest in the Isle of Man and the Isle of this, the Isle of that. And if you, I wouldn't do any of that stuff, you know, you're going to you're going to you're going to go to jail. You need to, we need you need to, to go back your... to the wingman code. Do wrong, get wrong. Do right, get right. right. Sooner or later, you will get caught. Yeah. A lot of a lot a lot of a lot, a lot of pilots go for that stuff, too. And I've known of some that either either went to jail or paid. A didn't, we, didn't some pilots not want to pay their taxes at FedEx? Yeah, I, I know, I know. It was a I whole little thing. We're not paying the government. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. I know. I remember. I remember a couple in particular. I used to fly with them. They so got I'm no on, trouble. So I'm on TV with the lawyers and stuff like that. On amazing. It <laughs> didn't go good. But they didn't. They didn't go to jail. They just spent the retirement right there. That's amazing. Well, let me tell. We talked about this, Dr. Paul. Let me tell the listeners that there's good news all the time. But let me tell you how to find good news. They just had the Gwyneth Paltrow case of skiing, and she's suing somebody for a dollar. He's suing a multimillionaire for 300000 When you see news like that at the very beginning of a news show, that means things are going good. That means things are going good. It was like, this is how the news works. Michael Jackson died. When was it? It was in June 25th, 2009. Mm -hmm. The same day, this woman who was so famous named Farrah Fawcett, beautiful woman. She was a beautiful woman. I used, she was my first one I saw in a commercial. I said, she's gorgeous. They did a Noxzema commercial or something with Joe Namath when I was a little kid. Anyway, Farrah Fawcett died also the same day. Michael Jackson got front page for three weeks. Farrah Fawcett got page eight, two paragraphs. Because it's whatever is bigger sells. Well, when nothing big is happening and they're putting a ski accident on and she's suing for a dollar, a famous actress, that means things are going good. I'm sorry to say, Dr. Paul, it didn't last very long, but it did. It was there. So there are that's our job. We're going to bring you good news. When you finish listening to our show, our objective is, is for you to feel better than you did when you started. Yes. Yeah, we do. We do want you to like us and please give us a like, especially if you're watching YouTube. It helps the algorithm and uh, it helps us, too. Yeah, uh, I can give you a quick update. Did you know you talked about the uh, the trial with Gwyneth Paltrow? Did you know it was decided? There's a verdict reached yesterday. No. I don't. Yes. Yes. She won. No way. She won and she won one dollar. He was suing initially. This is like the second suit. I guess it was retired uh, ophthalmologist. And uh, he said she crashed into him, broke his ribs, and caused mental dysfunction and things like that. This is like 2016, seven years ago. So I think he was suing for, I think it was like three, it was a $30 million. Or th yeah, it went from, from three, three million to 300,000. And uh, the jury believed her and not him. She was, and do you know why, Dr. Paul? Because she spent big money on lawyers. They had all kind of like uh, models in the courtroom. She right. had all these testimonies. She flew in people from everywhere, experts, that it's impossible, like the exact angle that he was talking about, to get the, the, the impact that she said she received. Right. I mean, she had all kind of stuff. But he, he paid more than a dollar. 
because she also sued for her legal fees. Her legal expenses, yeah, that's going to be considerable. That's, that's going, to be- going to be considerable. You know about that. My daughter's a lawyer. Talking about lawyers, how about this? She told me that black lawyers, it's less than 5% of all partners in our U.S. law firms are black. But what she really told me, and she works for one of the largest law firms in the world, what she really told me that disturbed her, less than 1% have the ability to be in the discussions for big business deals, the multi-billion dollar deals, less than 1% of the lawyers who deal with those kind of transactions are black. And that's a problem, Dr. Paul. Hmm. I, yeah, again, I don't know. I only know a couple of lawyers. I don't know anyone who's so-called a partner. I wonder how Aaron long Brown it, might be soon. Could be. Well, she could she could break it. She could break that uh, that glass ceiling and uh, start her own thing. That's right. All right. You know what time it is, Doctor Paul? What time is it? It's time, Doctor Wingman, PSA. This is a Wingman PSA from the Eleven Facts in Life. Still, fact number six: lust. Those are one of the eight deadly sins. Lust. And lust is sex without love. Lust. This has been a wingman PSA. Sex without love. That's a short one right there. When I do sex education, when I spoke in the schools, it was really short. Hmm. I told the I told the boys a roach can be a father. It takes a real man to be a daddy. That's that's good. And a roach can be a father. I should write that down. A roach can be a <laughs> that's good. That's I haven't heard that on. Uh, that's, it should be a, a PSA we put on. Uh, I don't know ESPN or something. All right, we'll do it now. This is a wingman PSA. A roach can be a father, but it takes a real man to be a daddy. Yeah, I, spe- I expect to hear Stephen A. Smith say that. It would, it would, it would be pretty good. He'd do a good job with that too. No, you got Drew Brown who came up with that. That's true. <laughs> you do it together. I know you have a good story for me. Is it true a 90-year-old just had kids? Yep. Yeah, you want to hear about it. is his name Mr. Pickles for real? His name is Mr. Pickles. Now, there was someone that that a little before him, you ever heard of a British billionaire named uh, Bernie Ecclestone? Bernie Ecclestone is the president of Formula One Racing. He's a multi-billionaire. And he became a father at the age of 89. Wow. Now, I don't know if he is or not, but Bernie Ecclestone might be jealous of Mr. Pickles because he became a father actually at 90 with his partner of 29 years. Usually a man 29 years they were going together? Yeah, 29 years they were going together. And usually a man can will have you know fertility. From puberty to maybe, you know, all of his life, most of his life, actually, 60s and 70s. But Mr. Pickles did it at 90. And now he did have a child. He, Mr. Pickles had triplets. Triplets? Mr. Pickles had triplets at 90. That's some good sperm there. Right. Well, you know, in full disclosure, Mr. Pickles is not exactly who you think he is. Mr. Pickles is actually a tortoise at the Houston Zoo. And for the and that, first, and what's, what's a trip is he'll live to be 150. That's right. So he's basically he's he's a he's a middle aged he's a middle aged man. man. He's a middle aged male at 90, and he's got three triplets, and they're named Mr. Pickles' sons are named Dill, Jerkin, and Jalapeno. Those are the three, and we'll show pictures of uh, Mr. Pickles and family. Well, you know, animals, they could show us a lot because, you know, we're animals also. And we, you know how I feel. There's only one race, the human race, but there are different species. And I have a story to tell you about a couple of different species. There was a rabbit named Amy and a cat named Chrissy. And these people own both of them. Well, they both got pregnant. They actually had their babies in the same hut. The owner went and took the rabbit and her babies and put them in a separate hut because she thought that there would be a problem. What happens is both mothers stop feeding their babies because of stress. So she put the rabbit back in with the cat 
and they actually feed from each other, especially the rabbit wasn't able to produce enough milk. So the baby rabbits went over to the cat and fed from the cat's teats. And they lived together. Now, if a rabbit and a cat can live together, why can't we? And I'll go one step further. You ever heard of orca whales? Yes. Killer whales? Mm -hmm. Well, they just had a picture of a killer whale with a baby pilot whale. Two different types of whales. And orca whales eat pilot whales. They kill them on purpose. And this orca whale was taking care of this baby pilot whale. So what I'm trying to say is if other people can look past differences, if other species can look past differences, we can do that too. We're the ones who make good news here, Dr. Paul. We are. We're the ones who have to come together. What do you think about the cat and the rabbit? Yeah, well, that that, that can happen. And there's a case not far from here. There's a... Uh like an animal uh, well, zoo, a small zoo. And they talked about, they got they all kinds, they call it Noah's Ark. And there's all kinds of animals. And they have a case of a, of a bear, a lion, and a tiger. Raised, they live together. And for some reason, after a few years, they separated them to, to do something. And they found that all three animals would cry at night. And they put them back together. Because they were lonely for each other, and you just see pictures of them just just hanging out, just doing what what big animals do. And they all get along in the community, which is very very interesting. So it can happen. Doctor Paul, you're one of the smartest people I know, so I love to test you. So we, I'm going to give a shout out to my main man Benny Marco, who does Family Derby, which is a great program. He just gets whole families together to play games against each other. But anyway, Benny Marco sent this, and it's something for speeds. Are you ready, Dr. Paul, to guess I'm the speeds of the things I'm about to tell you? Sure, shoot them at me. And the God's honest truth, we haven't talked about this before. Miles per hour, what is a snail? How fast can a snail go? Oh, if I'm going to say... Zero zero one miles. You're so smart. Just for the mere <laughs> fact that you said point. Point zero three miles. <laughs> okay. That's, okay. Very good, Dr. Paul. Okay. All right. How about a human being walking? You mean max speed? No. Oh, you could average walking speed. Average walking speed. Average would probably be oh, probably two miles an hour. Three point one. Okay. The bicycle. What's the average speeds of a bicycle? Let's see. I'm gonna, I got to think of the uh, Minister of Information. He's a professional, but he would know that, actually. I'm going to say uh, bicycle probably six. Ten to 20. Okay. A cheetah, fastest land animal in the world. Oh, it's going to be like 60 plus. 75 freaking miles per hour. Okay. You realize how fast that is? Yeah, then they got to rest for well, like like two days or two hours or something. <laughs> All He's right, like, a peregrine falcon. Peregrine falcon. How fast can it dive? You're not going to get this because it blows my mind. Hmm. I get okay. He's probably going to be like a ballistic, uh, a ballistic uh, object. Three, two, three for a second. Peregrine falcon. I bet you could probably get to a uh, hundred. 240 miles an hour. They can really? drive. A bluefin tuna. 30. 30. 43 miles. A greyhound. That's going to be, I'm going to say 60. 45 miles per hour. Then they do a bunch of planes that we all know, but a spacecraft. Around the Earth, uh, let's go 17,500. Very close, 25,000 miles per hour. And the last one that I know you know, the speed of light. 186,000 miles a second. <laughs> <laughs> That's easy. That's why you're Dr. Paul, and I'm just Commander Drew Brown. No, I, I went to physics class. Huh? <laughs> I went to physics class. I know. But you remembered those. I, rem <laughs> I knew those numbers, too, but you actually remembered them. Okay, you know we do our frequent flyer flow line where we get questions from our audience 
are frequent flyers, actually, people who listen to us. Well, I got one here from Tamika from Minneapolis. And I'm sorry to say it's from the recent school shootings, but she's a 32-year-old single mom, and she's scared to send her kids to school. And she would like our advice on that. What do you think, Dr. Paul? That's that's a tough one. Uh, she's 32, so I'm going to assume her, her children are, are pretty young. And with the, the people running around doing these horrible things, they have no age limit, upper or lower. So her her concerns are valid. I always said, you know, it's it's hard when you get older to say to, to not say, well, back in my day, blah, blah, blah. I always said as I got older, I would not do that. It's it's very hard not to do that because we're always referencing, you know, our past. But I would say that she the society's caught in a in a tough spot. You can't be paralyzed by fear and just stop your life, stop living. At the same time, we can't be go uh, to deviate too far the other way and be totally fearless and careless. Um, I mean, obviously, Something I think that maybe she might do, Dr. Paul, is she can go to the school and find out what the security measures are at her school. She yeah. can all, it also depends what kind of neighborhood, but it doesn't any matter. Bad neighborhoods are not the ones getting shot up. That's right. So that doesn't matter anymore. But she can be a little bit more diligent, maybe, in getting her kids to school, maybe getting a text or something during the day, and then receiving them coming back from school. It's bad out there. And, yeah. you know, this is this is why I have my God and God takes care of me. I also put a lot of I have to put a lot of faith in God that he'll watch over us. But that's a horrible thing to be scared to send your kids to school. And you know how you and I feel about school. We right. know it is the the key to success, the yeah. key to success. Well, how about our wingman this week, Dr. Paul? Oh, my God, am I excited about this. This is a young lady named Amy Copeland. And Amy Copeland, I think it was um, in 2019, about 10 years ago, wasn't it, Dr. Paul? I oh, believe it was. It was, uh, was it, was it 2012 or 13? 2012 or 2013. Amy had a homemade zip line and she had an accident on it. Pretty bad accident. And what happened is she contracted a flesh eating bacteria. Listen to this, a flesh eating bacteria. And the doctors had to amputate both hands and both legs, one below the knee and one above the knee. It was that bad. So let me tell you what Amy Copeland did. She said she had a pity party for a long, long time. But then all of a sudden, she got out of a pity party. She got two master's degrees. She won two national swimming titles. She got married. But her greatest achievement is she made an all-terrain wheelchair for the state parks in our state of Georgia. Incredible. It looks like a tank. And you have handicapped people now who can go through the woods and they can navigate through territories that they wouldn't have been able to do before. And Amy Copeland, the Amy Copeland Foundation, what a wing person or wing group they are to take care of the handicap. Dr. Paul, what do you think about that? This is this is great. This is an example of, of someone who who has extraordinary courage and tenacity uh, that I can't, I can't compare that with anything else. I can't compare Amazing. that with anything else. And not only for herself, but also to make this available to a whole group of people who would not be able to get outside and do those very things. We'll, we'll show pictures of it. But you have a whole group of people now who can explore the great outdoors, who can be outside. They're not confined. They're not confined to a, a wheelchair or just confined to a certain environment. They can go and explore too. This will this will this is a tremendous benefit. So many doctors and so many people have said just being outside can relieve so much depression. Mm -hmm. If you just go outside and take a walk in nature, it just changes your environment. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dr. Paul, and thank you all you frequent flyers who listen to us. We're trying to bring you good stuff every week. 
And I will say this, whatever is meaningful and whatever is beautiful and whatever makes you happy, may you have it now and forever. And I pray for peace. And I pray for peace, too. And to all those out there, we appreciate all those who listen, like, and share our message. No matter what happens, no matter what you hear in the news, always strive to keep your chin up. Float like a butterfly, sting like a bee. Thank you once again, Dr. Paul Thompson, my friend. Thank you for your love, your time. And that's something that we won't ever get back. I want to thank all the listeners, too. Thank you so much for doing the show, Dr. Paul. We're jamming. Well, thank you, Mr. Drew, for inviting me on. Always good to talk to you. And ladies and gentlemen, please remember to like, share, and subscribe to this podcast or any of the podcasts. If you're looking at YouTube, uh, they say smash the like button. Don't smash it. Just press it gently and refer to use as a link to all your friends. You can also look at us on our website, wingmenshow.com. W-I-N-G-M-E-N show, S-H-O-W dot com altogether, wingmanshow.com. And we hope to see you in the future. Thanks again, Mr. Drew. Oh, you're welcome. And we're still floating like butterflies and stinging like bees. Rumble, you badass jet pilots, rumble. May there be peace on earth and goodwill towards all men and women.